Okay, folks. Um, we, uh, thank you very much for joining us uh, so promptly. Um, I'll introduce myself. First of all, my name is Brian Irvine, and I'm a biodiversity technologist at CAFRI. Uh, the biodiversity team has a role in EFS promotion, developing EFS online training and delivering EFS training events. Uh, you're, so you're very welcome to this um, presentation uh, on EFS wider tranche four. Last year, we ran evening sessions and farm walks at the three campuses with over 200 attending. However, this year, due to circumstances, uh, we are trying out webinar technology. So however you got here, uh, thank you for trying it out too. Uh, please note there will be a second agroforestry webinar on Tuesday the 8th of September at 7 p.m. And we'll be focusing on materials and resources you need for establishment, uh, farmers' experiences, uh, and the EFS specifications specifically for agroforestry. Now for tonight, uh, in the event of technology letting us down, uh, please note that the event will be recorded and the link to the recording will be put onto the CAFRI website or CAFRI TV. Uh, you will have the opportunity uh, throughout the event to submit questions. Laptop users can submit questions using the Q&A icon at the bottom of your screen. So you hover your mouse at the bottom right. Uh, mobile users can access the Q&A option via the three dot icon, which appears when you tap your screen. Uh, please select the All Panelists option when submitting your question, and we will answer the questions at the end. Now, in addition to this, we would like your feedback in relation to the event. A short survey, only two questions, will be available at the end of the event, and we'll be grateful if you could complete these uh, in order to give us some feedback. So I'd like to welcome our speaker tonight, uh, Robert Beggs, uh, who is a CAFRI Biodiversity Technologist uh, based at Greenmount. Robert has considerable experience of agri-environment schemes and latterly of the processes uh, within EFS. In addition to this, we have Nicola Warden, who has organi organised this event and acts as host, and John Courtney, who is in charge of the EFS wider scheme uh, from Countryside Management Delivery Branch, and Rowan Call from CAFRI to provide IT support. So tonight's event is going to focus on EFS wider tranche four. There are 5,500 EFS agreements in place from three tranches. There will be several hundred from tranche four higher, and currently tranche four wider is open until the 11th of September. Uh, whilst this is a five-year scheme spanning 2021 to 25, as regards inspection, the work that you apply for has to be completed in a very short time frame, mostly by June 2021. Now, in the past, you would have had considerable interaction with department staff over an environmental scheme. Nowadays, it is internet, your own decision, and maybe an agent. So the success and compliance with the scheme depends on yourself and your level of engagement in the process. Now, the scheme may come across as complicated at first because it is broad in its aspirations. However, in reality for yourself, it will boil down to three or four options for your farm with one or two page specifications for each of these options. So you're all very welcome. I'm now going to hand over to our speaker, uh, Robert, over to you. Thank you, Brian. So we'll just make a start. So uh, environmental farming scheme, wider level, um, the 2020 application window. Okay. So first thing, uh, it's voluntary scheme. Uh, it's one agreement per uh, farm business. It's a scheme duration of five years. And the agreement uh, term for this particular application window, um, those agreements will be from the 1st of January, 2021 till the 31st of December, 2025. Uh, there's compulsory online training that comes with the scheme. You will need to complete and retain EFS records if you go ahead. And there are very good EFS information sheets uh, for all the options and all the cattle items, and we'll have a look at some of those later. 
the EFS, there's um, terms and conditions, as you would expect. Um, those, again, are accessible on the website. Okay. So some of the, the details, um, all applications are um, done online through the DERA online services. Uh, digital assistance may be available in local uh, DERA direct offices um, as far as possible for the current situation. So the basic eligibility of the scheme, um, we need a category one or a category two farm business number. You need three hectares of eligible land um, that is within your control for the duration of the scheme. Can't have any dual use claims, so um, it has to be a single claimant, so you couldn't claim EFS and someone else claim a uh, basic payment scheme, for, for an example. Um, and there's no double funding permitted. Uh, maximum number of options is four, so within your scheme you could undertake four of the options. Um, there are some application value limits, um, so the minimum value of an agreement um, needs to exceed uh, 2,500 over the five-year duration. Uh, the maximum value, um, so if your farm is up to 25 hectares, uh, your maximum value is 12,500. And if you're over 25 hectares, it's 12,500 plus 26,67 per hectare, up to 20,000. So most probably fall into the, the 12 and a half thousand category. Okay, Nicola. So uh, information on some of the options, um, there's 18 wider uh, general options. Six of these are arable, uh, four uh, concern native trees, four concern uh, water courses, and there are four field boundary options. In addition to that, there's three standalone options. Uh, these are traditional native breeds, that's the Irish model cattle, establishment of native woodland uh, less than five hectares, and organic conversion or, or management. So just in, in a chart form, we have the 18 wider general options, uh, plus some additional optional uh, capital items, uh, or NPIs as we call them and then the three wider standalone options. So those all come together to give you an EFS wider agreement. So some of the options include capital items known as essential capital items or NPIs. So as essential refers, these are, these must be done. Um, and then in addition to that, uh, we have some uh, optional capital items or MPIs that are available for some of the options. Um, the items vary depending on the option. Um, the information sheets on the website are very good. They will let you know uh, which are essential items and which are additional optional items that you could undertake. All options include annual management requirements, including establishing, retaining and managing options every year. So that's that's the kind of the top level of the tree, if you like. So the, the annual management requirements for whatever the option is, and then below that, we have our capital items. Okay. So an example, um, uh, this is, so if we pick the example of a creation of riparian buffer, so two meter width on grazed riparian buffer, so that'll be along a water course. It's a very valuable option. So the essential capital items with that, um, see in the first box there is to erect a protective fence. So you need a protective fence if you're going to establish a buffer. So the fence must be completed um, in year one by the 1st of June. And then in addition to that, there is a additional optional capital items. So these are ones that you can undertake if you want. So the optional ones here, we have a gate and two posts, if you want to put a gate and posts in to, to get access. There's a drinking truck, uh, base and pipe work. So if you're a riparian, if you put a riparian zone in and that restricts access to a water course, say for stock, you can be funded to put uh, an, another water source into that field. Um, and just the third one is a pasture pump and associated pipe work uh, where, where drinking truck is impossible. So there's the essentials and the, the additional optional ones that you could undertake. So the annual management, so these have to be done 
Um, so you, you would keep the buffer in place for five to 10 years. You would maintain the fence as stock proof. And within the buffer, there's no cutting, uh, grazing, or fertilizer. So it's, there's, no, there's no farming activity in there really at all. Um, and the final thing is you would keep records. So you would keep records of when you establish the, uh, the buffer, riparian zone, and um, any, any other notable things that need to be recorded. Okay. So just a quick run through of um, some of the options. Uh, provision of winter feed crop for wild birds. So you can see there years one to five, it's 590 pounds per hectare per year. Creation of pollinator margins, um, those have to be a, a 10 meter width. Um, and that is uh, 2,530 pounds per hectare per year. And creation of pollinator margins, um, 10 meter width, and you can see the value of that. So those um, those amounts, that's that's for all the work that you complete. So that's for, for buying the seed, for the cultivation, um, and for the, for the establishment. So that's that's the total the total grant that you would receive. Yeah, just a few more of the wider arable options. Um, you can see there we have creation of arable margin, uh, six meters split, uh, rough grass. Um, and you can see this. Uh, you can see in year one, you can see the, the money you would receive, and then years two to five. Uh, retention of winter stubble has previously been um, very popular. Um, so years one to five, you would receive 85 pounds per hectare per year. You went with that option, so just just some rough ideas. Creation of arable margin, um, that's another option, and, and again, you can see the funding that you would receive from that there. So uh, moving into the native tree options, uh, the first one planting native tree corridors. You can see a pretty good picture of it there. Uh, year one, uh, two thousand one hundred and forty-six pounds ninety. And then years two to five, that goes down to 465 pounds per hectare. So year one, that's really um, the money for establishing the area. Um, and years two to five, you're being paid really for the maintenance of that area. Um, second option, natural regeneration of native woodland. So um, as you can see there, that's an area that is, is scrubby. So you would be paid to allow that area to well, to basically regenerate to woodland. So it's, it's fenced off and we have to regenerate to woodland. And you can see there are years one to five, 360 pounds. Okay. Uh, one more um, uh, native tree option. So this is establishment of agroforestry. Um, and you can see the funding they've received in year one and then years two to five on that one. And this is the fourth one on the native trees. Uh, this is create creation of traditional orchard. Um, year one, um, you can see there you received 300 and sorry, 3,832 pounds. And then years two to five, that goes down to 110 pounds per hectare. So moving on to water courses, um, I've already mentioned riparian buffers. That's a, you can see the photograph there as an example of what we're talking about when we mentioned riparian buffers. So uh, width uh, two meters or 10 meters, um, it's on grazed, so there's no native trees, um, that one or, or planted with native trees. So it either can be on grazed or planted with native trees. So just a few more of the, um, of the finances. Um, for buffers here, you can see just look at the two meters, two meter width first. You can see on grazed um, and the six pounds seven pence per meter. And then planted with native trees, that's six pounds 30 ones per meter. Um, and again, 10 meters width, you can see the different rates for that there. All this information is on the information sheet. So if there is any that are of interest to you, you can go later on and you can get these rates as well. And with that, so we're not going to the detail of this one too much, but again, this is just more of the information that you can get on the information sheets. This is just a just a diagram that shows the water course basically, and then shows um, this is an option that's a two meter width that's planted with trees. 
So you can see you have a block of trees um, seven meters wide and then 10 meters where there's no trees. So basically that's to allow access to the water course for maintenance as one of the reasons. So again, information sheets, again, all this information, um, they're quite specific and for this one, it specifies where the trees have to be planted. Um, similar, um, this is 10 meter riparian zone planted with trees. Um, so again, you can see the water course um, and you have your blocks of trees um, spaced out with uh, spaces where there's no planting. And then there's a strip along the front, so between uh, the fence basically, um, where there's no planting. So um, there's the kind of the requirements for all those there. So wider options, field boundary um, options, um, these tend to be very popular. You can see in the picture there, you have traditional dry stone walls. So those can be single skin or double skin, and that's a single skin. Um, you can see um, single skin walls is 13 pounds basically per meter, and double skin is 22.95. So different rates for, for, for different types of walls. Uh, it's very important if you do go ahead um, that you claim correctly. So if you did say build a single skin wall, you have to be sure that you don't claim it as a double or vice versa. Okay. Uh, some of the other field boundary options, we have hedge laying. So that's basically where you have a tall hedge and it's, it's suitable to do so. You can lay that hedge down. So cut through it partially and then bring stones over and put up two pre-protected fences as one on your side. You can see there in a year one, you get 16 pounds, four pence per meter. So that's that, that's really the money for doing the work through the actual hedge and then putting up the two fences. So it's, it's fully inclusive. Another field boundary option is planting uh, new hedges. So this is a, see the picture is a, a brand new hedge, uh, one fence on either side, so two fences. And again, it's 15.83 per meter. So again, fully inclusive. So that cost covers uh, your fences and your and your edge. So similar to the stone walls, it's very important that you claim correctly. So if you if you plant a new hedge, you need to be sure you claim it as that and not hedge name. Because the last thing we want you to do one of these and not get paid for it because the premiums incur. Okay. So the three standalone options. Uh, the first one is traditional native breeds. So that is Irish moil cattle, uh, just it's female Irish moil cattle. They must be registered with the Irish moil cattle society breed register, and they must be aged six months or over on the first of January in nineteen year. Uh, second standalone option, so this is establishment of native woodland less than five hectares. Um, you can see in the picture there. So year one, uh, 2,625 pounds per hectare, and then years two to five, that goes down to 516. So as I said before, year one, the higher rate is really to pay for the establishment of the area, and then years two to five, you're really going to pay to maintain it. So if you're replacing dead trees, uh, just one example. Uh, and then I think the final um, standalone option is the organic option. Um, so for grassland, this is an improved grassland and semi-improved grassland, and it excludes enclosed rough grazing, rough grow land, or heather land. Arable land, it could be an arable land, or it could be horticulture. Um, I suppose the, the horticulture top fruit as well. Um, the important thing to on this one is if you are minded with the organic option, um, it, it requires a lot of thought because it is, it's a long-term change. So if you are interested in it, some careful thought needed that you're happy to move your system down that route. So just, um, just a picture really of what would be acceptable to bring into the organic option. So we can see in the picture there of the tech, we've got the improved and semi-improved pasture. That's fine. Um, you couldn't try and bring in semi-natural um, pasture to the organic options, such as this one with the X. 
So it's just improved or semi-improved in terms of grassland, that's all. Um, so within the organic uh, option, uh, there's conver conversion payment to help with the additional costs and income loss that occurs during conversion. Uh, there, and there's a management payment, so that's applicable when the full organic conversion is achieved uh, to encourage the continuation of the organic farming system. Um, organic certificates must be from one of the UK approved certification bodies. And some EFS options are not eligible on the same as organic options. So there are some EFS options that you could not go on and put on your organic area then. So after uh, we spoke of the different options there, um, the next layer we have the capital items. So the most popular capital items or the most common certainly would be these ones here. So stock proof fencing, gate and two posts, drinking truck, drinking truck base and drinking truck pipe work. So against each of those, you can see the payment rates. So stock proof fencing, six pounds per meter, gate and two posts, um, 190. Drinking truck uh, 41, drink truck is 30 uh, pounds 54, and pipe work is 3 pounds 91 per meter. So with the stock proof fencing, um, again, all these details are in the information sheets on the website. As you would expect, um, it must be all new materials. Uh, there's a British standard that the fence must meet. Uh, galvanized uh, must be galvanized woven wire plus three strands of line wire or five strands of line wire. So line wire is typically barbed wire, as you see there in the picture. So either sheep wire and three strands of barbed wire, or uh, five strands of barbed wire, whichever whichever suits you. The overall height of the fence must be one point two meters, and posts must have a fifteen year life and a minimum fifty year life and be bark free. And we can see the information sheet for details on the widths of posts and the sizes. So the gate and two posts uh, MPI, you can see in the picture just as an example. So the minimum standard, uh, the gate must be galvanized. It must be a six bar gate with bracing. It has to have a minimum width of 4.27 meters and an overall height of 1.1 meters, so that's from the bottom rail to the top rail. Uh, the posts, um, they must be galvanized as well, um, 114 millimeter diameter and three millimeter thick steel. Uh, steel piping are similar material. It must be set in concrete and can't open outwards onto a public road. The drinking truck, um, it must be precast concrete or PVC. It must have a minimum capacity of 65 litres, which is 15 gallons. Generally, um, it would be that anyway. It must be fitted with a ball valve and service box and must be placed on a hard standing. So that hard standing will be that, that's poured concrete. So it has to be on a hard standing. Now, where you need water um, provision and it's not possible to put in a drinking truck um, with an out farm, just one reason. You could avail of a pasture pump if it's applicable. So you can see in the picture here, um, this is a pasture pump that's taken its water from, uh, from an existing water course. So um, it's generally only really for cattle and horses, I think. It's not applicable for sheep. So. Again, you could refer to the information sheets if that is something that you are interested in. So records, all options require you to keep records and maintain scheme records. If you have an inspection, the FS inspector will check that you check your records. And we do provide a, a record template that's on the Vera website. Um, but you can use your own format. So with records, generally what we would advise is you keep those records at the time. So it's much easier if you uh, record the date that your fence was put up or the date that your hedge was planted or your trees were planted than going back later on you know, a year or so down the line and trying to fill, fill in the blanks. 
So we would always advise to keep those records up and it's just much simpler. So just an example of the record template. So you can see along the top and you have your business ID, you have the year um, you're in and the field number. You can see within this field, this person has, um, they have planted a new hedgerow. So you can see the date they have completed it. Um, they've just they've said planted new hedgerow, including two type of fence. And they have recorded the length that was completed. So basically the date that it was completed and what was done and the length that it was. In the same field, they have established an area of native woodland, so again, they've recorded the date where it was completed in the field. And uh, in this case, they've given the area and they've even broke down the number of trees that's there. So it's just an example of the kind of things that you would be recording if you went ahead with any of these options. So what next? Think about, will I have management control of the land for five years? That's, that's very important. Um, you need to be sure that you will have the land for five years. So avoid bringing in con acre land. What would I like or need to do? Um, is it achievable within the time scale for completion? And Please read the information sheets. Now, just on the what would I like uh, or need to do, prioritize the things that you would like to do most or that you need to do most. So if it is a riparian buffer, you know, prioritize that there. Is it achievable within the time scale? That needs some careful consideration. Um, you need to take into account the work, the other work you would have on the farm at um, that time of the year, maybe the labor that's available. And just make sure that whatever you do is achievable. Um, achievable within the time scales. So just um, a little bit of a summary on how to get more information. So uh, this is the your website, you can see the address at the top. So in the quick links box, which is on the right hand side, you will see there will always be an option for environmental farming scheme. So if you click on that. Um, and then uh, you will see there's a section for information sheets. And uh, click on the information sheet for the creation of a two meter riparian buffer on Grias. So this is what, um, they all have the same layout, the information sheets. Um, they're, they're very easy to read and they, they give you the basic information that you need to get the option in place and to maintain it. So these are the, the requirements and controls. So um, so you just take the first one there for an example in the, in the first box. Complete all capital works required. So erection of protective fence by 1st June. So that's the first thing that you have to do. Um, if you can switch across to the other side, then you will see on down a bit, uh, the riparian buffer must not be cut or grazed. Uh, no fertilizer, organic or inorganic. No fertilizer, organic or inorganic can be used. So the best way to look at these is if you have an inspection, this basically is what the inspector has as his checkbox. So he or she will go down these here and just check that you have these. So if you do put in a, a riparian buffer or indeed any of the other examples, you really need to look at it and just look at the information sheet and run down these and just say to yourself, have I got this one done and this one and this one? So basically we need a tick for each of these boxes. So let's say they are, they're, they're very basic, they're, they're good to read. So um, you should make yourself familiar with them if you do go for some, some of the options. Okay. So what next? Think about, uh, will I have management control of the land for five years? What would I like to do? Is it achievable within the time scale for completion? and read the relevant information sheets on those options before you go ahead, just so that you are aware of, of everything that's entailed in that option. Check the lengths um, and the areas in the fields. So if this is a hedge or a length of stone wall, check the length so that you have that information um, onto your application. Um, similar if you're thinking of planting an area of trees, um, you know, have a have an indication of, of what the area is, so you'll know um, you'll know the correct area. 
So prioritize options and items just in case you exceed the maximum value. So yeah, put in the most important ones that you want to do first. So maybe as a water course you want to protect and you need a fence there, put it in first if that's important and then work down and priority uh, in a priority list. And um, go to the DRA online services and submit your application or contact uh, DRA direct for information. So just a, a brief word on inspections. Um, the major problem is over declarations. So an example of that is you claim 120 meters of planting new hedge, including two protective fences. However, you actually only complete 76 meters. Um, so in that instance, you've claimed 44 meters too much. So that's going to get you a sizable penalty. So measure the lengths, the areas, the sizes, and claim very actively. And in, that, in that case there, um, because there's there's a 44 meter over declaration, that could actually mean that you receive very little or no money for the 76 meters that you have completed. So Claim carefully. The last thing we want is for you to do, um, if you need to do work and then not get paid for it. So claim carefully and keep records. Uh, you can use an EFS SAF3 to reduce your claim. Um, that you can't do that, however, if you've been notified of an inspection. So uh, you may be intended to do 120 meters. Um, you didn't get around it because of the weather or because you couldn't access the labor. If that is the case, you can change your 120 meters um, and you can reduce that down to 76. That'll, um, you'll not get a penalty then. So remember, it's your application, it's your agreement, and it's your responsibility to comply with the scheme. And your responsibility for payment. The previous schemes that would have been different, you would have had more contact with the Department of Agriculture. This is different. This is your application and this is your agreement. So you design it and you look after it basically. Uh, your claim for payment, that's an important one. Um, if you cast your mind back to um, basically any of those options, um, if you pick the, the tree planting, for example, or the hedge planting. Uh, with the hedge planting, you paid your your um, your payment in year one, so you don't want to miss your claim for payment in year one because that is going to be your biggest claim. So you need to understand what you have to do and when, and what you can't do and when. So just some uh, contact details. Um, if you have any queries at all. We can be reached on any of these numbers, so the telephone number and the email address there. So have a look at the information sheets um, and if there's any queries at all, any general queries in the scheme, you can get us on either of those, those contact points. Uh, thank you very much, Robert, and uh, uh, thank you, folks, for the questions that have been coming in as well this, tonight, and we're, we're going to be uh, moving those on. So any more questions you have, please. Uh, put them through because everybody else uh, learns from from your own queries. Um, one thing that came to mind as as I was looking at it um, was about riparian buffers. I'm wondering, Nicola, could you move me back to slide 15, please? And uh, I think one thing that uh, comes across is the the grant rate sometimes is is hard to to comprehend. And uh, riparian buffers are one particular option which are are very good. And uh, here's a good example of it, and it is, is basically fencing off a water course. In this case, quite often, the two meter option is selected. Um, the slide with the prices there, Nicola, is it the next one? Yeah, that's super. And this one here, you can see is quite confusing. It is uh, six pounds and seven pence for uh, year one. So that's six pounds for the, the uh, fence and seven pence a meter doesn't sound like an awful lot. So it's worth explaining. It's seven pence per meter. And uh, there's two meters deep between the fence and the water course, the, basically the top of the shuck. So that's actually about three and a half pence per meter. When you multiply up by 10,000 meters squared in a hectare, it comes to 350 pounds per hectare. So the annual payment is 350 pounds per hectare for the area 
behind the fence, which is uh, a lot more reasonable. And um, this is quite uh, a, a good one from the point of view of biodiversity, from the point of view of, of protecting the water course from nutrient, uh, and, and of course, from keeping stock out of the water course. Um, so that's just important to notice that whenever you see those figures in, in pence per metre, it is a bit misleading sometimes. Um, other comments I have to make, um, uh, Robert was giving us uh, specifications and those are very important and the key thing is those are minimum specifications. So if you want to do, if you want to make it uh, a higher spec, then that's that's the way to go, but it's the minimum specification that the inspector is looking for. Other top tips that Robert was talking about, that time scale is so important. Um, looking at what you can achieve uh, before June of 2021, uh, thinking that you're, you make an application, you're accepted, the, the scheme starts on the 1st of January, so that, so it's, it's a quite a tight uh, uh, time scale. Another tip is, is actually to get a, a farm map and just start to draw on that farm map and uh, pick out the fields that you're, you're most interested in. Um, and I think really looking at the list of options really will help this. So on the website, if you go to page, I think it's between 15 and 18 of the EFS wider, you will get a full table of those options. And that is, is quite a helpful thing to do, I believe. So I'm going to move to some of the questions coming through here. Um, and uh, John, uh, welcome this evening. Glad to have you. And uh, there's a question which comes up here quite often. Um, and can you, Richard's asked this, can you apply to tranche four if you've already been successful in tranche three? No, you're only allowed one application. Okay. So and, fortunately, and, you can't reapply. And sometimes <laughs> there is talk about, you know, there's opportunities, um, you know, if you're already in, there may be opportunities in the future. I know that's asked quite often of advisors. Is, is there anything there? No, it may have been talked about in the past, but no, there's there's, uh, there's no plans to tell that people in for a second bit of the chair. Okay, that's good. Thank you. Okay, um, another one, John, for you. Can can posts be concrete? I suppose uh, it, with it. Yes, provided there's the, there's the right spec. So really, if somebody was going to change from the standard wooden post, they would need to send in a, a spec to 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 countryside management to get approval. Okay. Give themselves right. Yeah, so so that uh, would we'll maybe move down, Nicola, to that last slide again. That's a good opportunity to emphasize that um uh good opportunity to emphasize that one. Um there is this uh, email contact which is really useful if you've got a specific question, can I do this? You can send an email off to this email address, you'll get a, an answer, a written answer, which then you keep, which is, which is quite positive and, and which we store as well in, in your business folder. Um, so if there's any uh, queries, you know, about a specific specification, can I increase the specification? Then, then that's the way you would go. Um, Okay, uh, Robert, a, a query here about the organic scheme. Um, if you were previously in the organic countryside management scheme and left, can you reapply uh, to convert back to organic? I might pass that one over to John. I probably <laughs> can, but it's quite specific. <laughs> no, you can't, you can't, you can't uh, reapply for conversion, but you can get management payment. Okay. So, uh, is that clear? Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. That's that's good. Okay. Um, okay. Um, a question, uh, John, while you're there, um, from Russell uh, about the gate and two posts. If this is to allow access to the water course, if the length of stockproof fencing is substantial. Is there only one gate set allowed, or are there multiple access points allowed? Well, for the the ten meter buffer step, you know they recommend that uh, a gate every one hundred and fifty meters or part thereof for access, because you have a, you have a bigger area of ten meters, and again it has to be caught, part of it caught. Okay. It's, you know, there's always two meters left along the 
and adjacent to the bank, so you're cutting eight metres in, 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 in a 10 metre buffer step. The three metre buffer step, you don't cut anything. And again, the, the, the benefit of, of the buffer step, and people may be not aware of, of, of buffer steps, not, the benefit is, is that it's uh, vegetation is allowed to grow and it stops nutrients running off the field, it stops uh, pesticides, it stops sediment, you know, washing. So it's really it's, it's to protect water quality. And our rivers and, and, and lakes, the water quality is, is, is not as animal good at the minute. So it's it's a good option. And, and farmers, you know, they're disappointed that the, the, the water stabilisation fence that was that was on is, is off now. And most of those fences were put in up to a metre out. So you're really only talking about two metres out. And if you take if you take an example of, of, of doing 200 metres of fencing at two metres wide, it's only 400 square metres. It's one tenth of an acre. You know, it's not really much land you're giving up. You know, it's 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 uh, it wouldn't graze much. And to, to to lose an acre, you would have to do a mile and a quarter fencing. So I mean, they might think that there's a lot of ground being lost. Still getting your single farm payment, but you're doing a lot of good for, for water quality. And uh, that's a, a good point, actually, John. You mentioned the the single farm payment uh, BPS. Um, so, Robert, what happens whenever um, whenever we fence off one of these areas? Uh, what happens in the long term as regards BPS? Uh, regards BPS, so you would receive your BPS for the duration of your, your EFS scheme um, for that, that area of buffer. So you would still receive your basic payment scheme. So it's, it is important to note that you don't lose out on, on BPS. And, and I could add, actually, some of the, the tree options on the on the same point um, have a, a retention period as well. So you have to retain them for the five years and then you have to retain them for another 10 or 15 years, depending on which tree option it is. And your, your, B, your BPS, you know, uh, continues through not only the scheme, but also the retention scheme, the retention period as well. Um, OK. Uh, I'll just keep going down through these. Um, so Morris has asked, digital copy of this presentation. Uh, certainly the presentation has been recorded, Morris, and uh, it will be uh, made available on the uh, on the CAFRI TV uh, website. We'll get that to you. Um, OK. Uh, OK, Sarah, just got a question. I think, Sarah, you're, you're a similar. Uh, query to one, one we've answered before, so um, it, it's only one application to EFS. Um, uh, Francis is asking about compulsory online training. Where is this found? Um, so that that's a, a good one to explore. Uh, Robert, what could we say about the compulsory online training? Yeah, so there's there is training um, for uh, covers all the scheme options, and um, it's not. It, it doesn't take an awful long time to do. It's it's quite brief. It's easy to access, um, and again, it's all done via the website. So it's it will not cause will not cause too much problem. And I, I should mention that those online training videos we've actually this year got them on the the website already. Um, so you you can um, watch them beforehand. Now, a part of the part of the the scheme is that we have to record that you've watched them. So if if you do want to watch them early, that's fine. Uh, they're only usually only five minute videos, uh, but you will have to um, watch them uh, once you're uh, approved uh, to join the scheme. And an important thing to note is that we, we are unable to make any payment to you unless you've completed your online training. But quite often you have maybe four modules, three or four, um, three or four options. So you may have in total five or six five minute online videos to watch. So it's it's not uh, an extreme requirement. Um, Russell has asked the time scale for application clo closure um, to acceptance. Uh, John, um, do you want to comment on that? The, the 11th of, of uh, September is the closing date. Just fairly weak. And uh, the the time delay to acceptance. Uh, when does an applicant um, know that that they're in? It hopefully will be before the end of the year, probably December, because his, his scheme will start then January twenty one to December twenty one. Okay. 
Oh, sorry, just five, five years forward, sorry. Yeah. yeah. 21 to 26. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, if you already hold, uh, Maureen's asked, if you already hold an EFS agreement from January 2020, can you add to it? Uh, so that we've covered that one, Maureen. No, we've, we've no uh, additions to uh, our existing agreements. Um, Robert has a query here. Um, uh, okay, John, if you have two fields separated only by a river, can you put in a two meter riparian buffer on one side of the river only or on both sides of the river? On both sides, there's no, there's no problem. Any water course you have, you can put a riparian buffer. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you, and from the logical point of view, we are keen that you put a, a buffer on both sides actually, because yeah. that, is, that is achieving uh, the water quality objectives for us. Um, Okay. Um, uh, all right. I'm just struggling getting the. Uh, oh, I've got a question uh, has frozen here. Let's see if I can go. Um, okay. I know there's a few more questions there below 1940. Nicola, can you see that my uh, my screen is frozen on my? Um, Francis at 1940 has a question. Yep. Um, just yep. So Francis is asking, can you replace a stock proof fence without a riparian buffer or riparian strip? And uh, okay, John, uh, do you want to take that? Um, that gives the question again, Nicola. Can you replace a stock proof fence without a riparian strip? No, it's it's not for it's not for stock proof fence, and it's 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 to protect that buffer strip. It keeps stock from the buffer strip. So really, the answer is no. But uh, but certainly, Francis, if there's already a, a stock proof, if there's already a fence there, and um, uh, any old fences, John, whenever you do put up a, a riparian two metre wide strip, um, yeah. we, we would request old fences to be taken down. Yeah. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Correct, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Nicola, um, sorry, I can't oh. still can't see the next questions. Um, another one that's already been asked and answered. Can you claim single farm payment on riparian two metres or 10 metre areas? Okay, so yes, yes, yeah. we, we yeah. can yeah. indeed recover that. Okay. Yeah. That's okay, Nicola. Mine's, my screen is unfrozen. <laughs> it's unfrozen again. Uh, okay, uh, and Martin as well. A similar question uh, is the area behind the right parent deductor from SFA. So we, we can still uh, we can still claim BPS on that. Uh, yes, John as well. Same. After the scheme is over, can you claim BPS in the two and ten meter area after the scheme is over? Well, that's a good question. Um, at this stage, what is guaranteed is that the uh, it is eligible during the scheme length, um, and and that is 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 all is made. Now, what happens to BPS uh, after five years? We are not sure at this stage. Um, we are moving down. Uh, a system where we're more likely to be rewarding environmental works in the future. Um, so certainly if the BPS remains the same um, in five years time, then the answer would be no, John, but um, it is likely that that system will change. Um, Brona has got a similar question about BPS uh, for native woodland five hectare area. Would you lose BPS for that? Uh, so for planting native woodland, Brona, then uh, as as I mentioned earlier, we would um, it would BPS would be eligible for the five years in the scheme, and then for the retention period as well, which is another fifteen years. So it, it would still be eligible for that during that time, and of course we will likely will be following uh, the English system of, of a woodland carbon grant in the future. So um, that is something that is, is our policy will be looking at. Um, okay, Thomas is asking. Um, OK, 
Okay, Robert, here's a question for you. Uh, for the native woodland standalone option, is there a benefit to getting a third party to make your application? i.e. people who do these applications as their business. So I guess we're chatting about the um, a woodland scheme and if that's the only thing you're applying for. What do you think, Robert? Um, it's it's really up to the to the individual. Um, make the application. Um, yeah, you know, you could do if you wanted to, you know, get a bit of advice on maybe what, what trees are, you know, uh, best in what areas, but again, it's, it's a personal, it's a personal choice on that one. I think Can I recommend on that, uh, uh, Brian. Please, we, please, John. Yes, we we actually do do a plan for anybody that puts in for woodland. So it's really only, you know, the only thing you need is is the the field in the area, and we would do the we would visit and and prepare a plan, a planting plan. So it yeah. takes responsibility off the. Uh, we will consider the 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 type of land and drainage in that. I just, you know. And in fact, you know, the only person who can make the application is 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 you yourself, the the, the business owner. Now, uh, people it brings on to agents. Maybe about a third of applications are made these days by agents, and uh, which is absolutely grand. Uh, and I would, whilst we're talking about third parties, I would comment that. Um, an agent is only as good as the information that he's given and quite often when an agent is making a claim he asks uh, the applicant have you done x y or z and the applicant says yes i have so the claim is made and one of our key things is actually getting the um the amount correct and uh, really the question needs to be have you done 135 meters in that field of of fencing have you planted exactly that amount that, that you've claimed? And Robert mentioned SAFs 3s before, and many people won't know what a SAF 3 is, but if you go onto the DARA website and you search uh, SAF 3, you will get a one-page form, which is very simple. It requires your business number. It has a line, and you just write in the field number and what you're changing about that field. And that is one thing I would have noticed that in this scheme, people will measure themselves, maybe via our mapping systems. They may not go in close enough to the field and therefore, and they'll maybe put the X right in the corner of the field and measure to the next corner. And uh, that quite often that may not be uh, accurate enough. So please uh, use the old acronym of, of measure twice, cut once, definitely. Go and measure again, and don't just make an assumption that the the measurement you made online um, a year previously it, it is is exactly what happened. Um, because quite often contractors are being used, and they may, for one practical reason or another, um, start put the strainer in a certain place. So make sure the the distances are correct. Um, Okay, Francis, looking for the, the link for training on the EFS section of DERA. Yes, it is uh, the, 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 um, the videos are on there. You will find them on, on there. The training program, Francis, will be uh, details are given to you once you um, join the scheme. So once you, you've made an application, then the department will, um, will say your, your application is accepted and then you will, you'll get an agreement to sign it. And at that stage, then we inform you about the, the training. And it's on a, a program call, called Moodle, and it's via our um, industry training website in, in the, on CAFRI. Um, OK. Uh, Morris has a question um, for, OK, uh, John, here's an interesting one. I've been hearing about a lot about the importance of salt marshes with global warming. Uh, are there any plans to help manage and protect these? I think probably that would be referring to our EFS hire. Um, yes. Any comments from a wider point of view, John? It's it's uh, it's a higher one. There, there is there is payment for for for, for marshes, but I'm not too sure about the salt marsh. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. No, it's not it's, just, it's not in the wider scheme. Not in, not in the wider scheme. Wider and, scheme. And, and again, again, you need to be in. in a, 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 an area of scientific interest, or you know, be, you know your, your fields need to be in the higher scheme to, to apply for that. Yeah, okay. Um, 
Okay, the Joseph is asking all about the riparian strip. Um, okay, uh, Robert, uh, the fenced off band, so the riparian strip, does it have to be either two or 10, or could it be, for example, six meters? So yes, it has to be either two or 10. And the reason behind that is um, there's a lot of consultation with people like the, the Rivers Agency. And the two or the, the ten is to facilitate actually managing the, the, the water course that's that's behind the fence. So it is important. Yeah, it is either two or ten. Okay, John, I'll, I'll pass this one to you. Uh, grant on dry stone walls um, uh, is the grant uh, for repairing or, or rebuilding. Uh, do I need photos before fixing, or is it for new walls only? No, it's a grant for restoration of existing walls, and the, it's not about putting a stone or two back on the wall. The wall needs to be more than half down, or, or a section of it. So we normally will examine those again, walk them, and map them for the farmer, and he will know what, what areas he can he can rebuild. So that's that. Uh, that involves a site visit. So Thank the, you. The, the farmer knows exactly what what's expected of him. Thank you, John. Uh, and, I, and I would comment, I was involved in some pre-inspections down in County Down on stone walls a, a year or two ago, and uh, there, on occasion people had um, applied for the wrong type of wall. They put down single, whether they should have put double or vice versa. And our system does not allow that to be changed. It is it is taken as a separate crop group. So in actual fact, if we if we turned up and the wrong thing had been asked for, we were unable to. We just had to say no. Um, we we can't accept that. And uh, Robert was referring to it earlier in his presentation about hedge laying and hedge planting. Another thing that crops up quite often, people will, unfortunately, so many people have planted a new hedge and they've applied for hedge laying. And again, the inspector has, has no option but to to um, rule out uh, that one. So it has to be, as it says on the tin, it has to be the right thing. So do take care in making the application and putting the right one in. Um, OK, uh, another question. I think we've covered that one. Let's see. Uh, thank you for all these questions. It's great to uh, uh, get an opportunity to answer these. Um, uh, if you, Davy has asked, if you've claimed in a previous year for something else, can you now claim in this scheme for something else? So, uh, I think Davy, uh, you're referring to, um, uh, okay. Uh, uh, there's no no changes to the scheme. Um, some of the options. Uh, require a payment each year, so annual management each year. Um, some of the options, all the money is paid in, in, in year one. Um, the second question for Davy, can you claim on native woodland that is established? So uh, there's nothing, I don't think, in our s scheme, John, for no, existing not on the wider, native woodland. No. Uh, on the higher there is. On the higher there is. Yeah. On the higher scheme, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. It's, it's, it's a tremendous number of questions. Very good. We'll try. We'll try and get through them all. Okay. And drinking troughs. Uh, John, is there a limit per field or area, or only one fenced off per water course? Uh, normally, if a field's bigger, maybe than five acres, we may allow up to two. Drinking troughs. Per, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's and nice. how how do we determine the quantity of drinking troughs allowed? Well, as I say, we would go above, we would go up to two if the feed was greater than five acres. Okay. Uh, sorry, I was reading that as quality, but actually, uh, I'm thinking we, we have a minimum spec of drink of of drinking trough, um, sixty five liters, I think. Is that the minimum? Yes. Spec? Yeah. yeah. And uh, okay. Okay. Uh, Stuart is asking. Um, uh, Robert, I'll give you this one. If a riparian buffer crosses field boundaries, and is claimed in two fields. Is this considered to be two options? No, that would just be one option. Okay, that's fine. And uh, uh, Alan has asked if an ungrazed riparian zone scrubs up after a period of time, is the area is the area still eligible for BPS? 
Um, that's a good question. Um, John, what do you think? Yeah, well, if it's really at the time of the application, you know, it's, it, it, stays, it stays the same, so it's still eligible. Still eligible, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because, that's, uh, because there, there is some of those buffer steps that have been planted. So then they're still eligible, so it really makes no difference. That's true. It brings in mind another uh, point in my mind when we were going through the presentation, actually. Robert was talking about natural regeneration of woodland, and certainly in a field where you apply for that, you do ha have to be careful that you're just applying for the MEA. So there is obviously ineligible part, say 50% of your field was ineligible, so we would pay the... the, the um, the, uh, the 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 grant rate on the other fifty percent that is eligible. Um, okay, is a permanent electric fencer still an option? Um, I suppose that would be for a riparian strip. John, is are we? Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, and as long as five, we okay. five pound a meter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, uh, Robert, question for you here. If a current hedge is poor, can it be removed and a new hedge planted? Uh, no, and John, keep me right on this. I think this is just for this is just for new hedges. Um, so I don't think you can remove a hedge and plant a new hedge. Well, if you did remove a hedge, you have to plant the same amount of hedge somewhere else. You know, so you can't you can't take out a grant aid to plant a tree, place that hedge. Yeah. So normally, forgetting about grant, if you take a hedge out, if you get permission to take it out, you have to plant the same, the same area somewhere else. Okay, so uh, the answer to that one, uh, Francis, is is no, because our, our mitigation, uh, our process for field boundary removal requires um, hedging to be planted at your own expense. We can't use grant data hedge for that. Uh, okay, Declan is asking, where can I find information about planting density, planting rate for the for the traditional orchard, and um, that again would be these these information sheets. And really, once you go into the DARA website and you go into into wider options, there is an information sheet, usually two to four pages, um, on each option. And that is so important to to read those. And in reality, you will only have, as Robert mentioned earlier, might have two, three, or four options on your farm. So really, it's a case of printing out those information sheets and and reading them thoroughly. Um, they're, they're, they're well laid out. Um, I think traditional orchard, I think we're 10 meter planting spacing, aren't we, John? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. And it, most most uh, uh, options, uh, the minimum is 0 0.1 of a hectare. This is 0 0.05. So you're really down to an eighth of an acre. You mm -hmm. know, and five or six trees is already expected. Not that they can be, they have to be traditional apple trees, fruit trees, you know, that would have been in the past here. And yeah. again, they're, they're all daying out, and it's, it's good. And every farm in the past would have had an orchard, you know, and it's, it's nice to recreate those. And it can be any fruit tree, pears, damsons, plums, you know. So but I think that's, that's a good idea for any farmer to, to, to come back and, ha and have an orchard. It's only a small area involved. Absolutely. It can be a real hot spot for, for our pollinators. Yeah. And uh, it can give us a, a bit of fruit for the table. Yep. But uh, another thing, was, you know, there's 20 options there, and some people say, well, there's really not much in it for me. But in fact, there is, and we should be thinking of, of what we can do, you know, not what, what we can get of the land, what we can put back, and, and some kind of a balance, you know. And I mean, considering the climate change and considering the environment, I think we should be all doing some wee thing, you know. I mean, the buffer steps, even there's only one field at the bottom of it, going, uh, new hedge, and every farm nearly, you'll see lots of fences. You'll see concrete lanes with a fence down each side. And to me, there's nothing nicer than, than a well-managed hedge on both sides of a lane, you know, for wildlife, for shelter and that. Uh, again, as I mentioned, the orchards, the woodlands, there's plenty of places on farms, maybe steep areas, hard farm, awkward corners. Those could be all planted up. And another thing there, the traditional moil cattle, uh, the breed almost died out in the, in, in the 1980s. There was only two herds in County Down in the whole world, down to 30 cattle. You know, they picked back up again, but there's still room for a lot more. And the the moil the moil cow is a very good cow. When it was a dairy breed, and now it's kind of a dual purpose breed. Gives great steaks, very more marble <laughs> steaks, very tasty. And uh, you know, they're they're a hardy animal. They can graze in kind of extensive grazing on rough pastures and that. 
very easy calved and, and very little problems with health. So I think people should consider that, you know, and keep that that debt of breed going. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think that I think if you look at them, the options there's something there for everybody. Just yes. put a bit back. And I think farmers should look to the future and look to the next generation and show by example that they're prepared to do a bit or give a little bit up. Thank you very much, John. And I, I must say I agree with you. Um, I'm coming to the end of the questions, folks. I'm going to wrap it up in, in another couple. Uh, my screen's frozen, but I can see one more here. Um, uh, Francis is asking about uh, uh, hedge laying and um, uh, uh, so just to clarify what hedge laying is. So hedge laying uh, is is really we're, we're cutting through the stem. It still stays alive, but that's it's quite a it's quite a, a skilled job, and it's a slow job, so it's it's very very different from from hedge planting. Um, so just make sure that you get the the right uh, option if if you're going for that one. And certainly if you're doing hedge laying, um, you know be realistic on the amount that you can do because uh, between January and February. Um, you will probably be um, only um, you'll you'll probably only achieve maybe you know fifty to hundred meters or so if if you're doing it yourself. Um, so so be realistic in the amount you you choose. Uh, could, I think, add, could I add that, Brian? Yes, John. Um, when you're hedge laying, you can actually interplant if the spaces between you know if there's gaps less than ten meters. Sometimes, if, if you have big gaps and, and you lay a hedge, it's still not cover that gap. So, if a gap's up to 10 meters, you can lay an interplant. But in the case of the gaps greater than 10 meters, you then can apply for a new hedge. So, you can, on the one hedge, you could have 50 meters laying and 50 meters planting. Yeah. So, you put that, and, and in greater than 10 meters, you put that down as a new hedge, and you can, you can, you can measure that and, and claim that separately for the same hedge. So, it's, it's, it can be a combination of both things. But gaps up to 10 metres, you just pay for laying and you can enter plant. Okay, uh, thank you. And, um, uh, okay, um, okay, and I just want to thank you, thank Bruna for her three thumbs up, John, for uh, your your previous comments as well. Um, that's good. Uh, I My screen is frozen again, Nicola, uh, below 2007. Is there any more questions? No, that's them all. That's them all. Okay, okay. Look, um, folks, uh, thank, uh, I see everybody is still here with us this evening as well. That's great. So um, it's getting dark out there, and uh, uh, we've been on for about an hour and 10 minutes. So I'm just going to uh, wrap things up. But now, first of all, um, I would like to uh, remind you about a, a second uh, seminar um, on, on agroforestry. So that's on Tuesday the 8th at 7 o'clock. And we're really focusing on the um, the EFS specification and our experiences and other farmers' experiences of the first year um, or two in, in agroforestry. And uh, so really planting, tree guards and maintenance and, and the specification and getting it right. And we'll have... Um, Rodrigo and Jim joining us as well for some for, for some queries as well. Um, so uh, other comments uh, is any queries uh, about the the uh, event tonight? You can email uh, Nicola. You can find out more about that event at, at the website there. Um, I must say that there is uh, remind you that we have two questions uh, at the end uh, for our survey. So please, whenever we finish the event, uh, please don't shut down. Wait for those two questions uh, to come across. And um, and my panelists, uh, John and and Robert, thank you very much indeed, and thank you, Ronan and Nicola. And uh, we close it there, folks. So thank you all very much, and have a good evening.